Following the lead of its little brother, the MT-09, the Tracer 900 GT has a full list of upgrades as well as a new higher price. Is it still worth it? Is it still the value tourer out there? Well, let's find out. So guys, welcome to Sixes Overdrive. My name's Kent. We're gonna go through everything about the new Tracer 9 GT that's coming out right around the corner. Matter of fact, you can probably pre-order yours now. So I thought I'd take advantage of this and go over some of the options and tell you guys exactly whether or not it's worth the new price tag or not. And before we get started, I'd like to encourage everybody to leave a comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking of the new Tracer 9 GT and if you're considering buying one. And while you're doing that, don't forget to subscribe and maybe hit the bell button down below so you can be notified of future videos. First off, we'll start at the engine. Because it's actually a major update, even though it doesn't quite look like it, it's increased displacement up to 899 cc's, one cc short of the full 900. So this allows for a 7% increase in horsepower, claimed by Yamaha of course, and it's gonna be 1500 RPM lower in the rev range, so it should be even more torque down low, more usability in town. This is something the triple from Yamaha, the triple 900 cc motor has never suffered from in the past, and it's just gonna get better with this new upgrade. The exhaust has changed. You can tell me what you think down below about what you think with the new hole in the bottom, but it's supposed to give a new stereo sound. They're a little bit proud of what the sound is. I find it pretty quiet and sewing machine like, but we'll have to see when it comes out. Now the engine, even with its 899cc up displacement, it's actually lighter. It's 1.4 kilograms lighter. So not only are we bringing weight savings and power increases to this new platform, it's also going to be Euro 5 compliant and Yamaha is claiming that it's going to be 9% better on fuel economy, which is really good because with Yamaha's fuel system before, you were able to get 300 kilometers to a tank easily, easily. Now you should be able to get 9% more and the tank has not changed size. I love that because I don't want a big tank. Yamaha is also claiming that the drive line, uh, the transmission and everything are going to be a lot more refined and sophisticated. I'm looking forward to that. It was a little bit clunky. It worked really well. Some missed shifts, but I'm waiting to see if they upgrade that. With the new price range, I would like to see something a little more silky. I know compared to the Triumph uh, Street Triple, I noticed the Yamaha's transmission wasn't quite as smooth as that. And those are some of the touches that will justify the price. Now, even though the Tracer looks the same, like if you're just looking at it and you're not comparing them right side by side, you're gonna notice that there's a lot of similarities. But there's a lot of changes. The frame is all redesigned. The engine sits more upright. It's more able to be a compact chassis with more lean into the front. This should improve feel and uh, agility. So we've got improvements to the suspension on both models. Um, I think personally the way I've looked at the dimensions and the fact that the shocks inside the frame instead of outside like the old model, I think that it'll make the front end on this bike a lot more, it should give a lot more feel when you're entering a corner and everything. And hopefully it stays really settled through that corner, but we'll only know once we start to review it. So with those frame improvements, they've also increased the load capacity, which was a little bit of a fail for the Tracer 900 GT. Um, a lot of people complained saying it was more of a one-up sport tour and two if you really had to. I took my wife on it. It was fine, but it's going to be nice having the extra capacity on it, especially when we go to talk about the luggage, which is coming up soon. Well, as in soon, I mean now because they're offering a new bracket on the back with the grab handles. So now you'll be able to get a three piece luggage, which will make your passenger feel a lot better with a little bit of a backrest on the back end. So that's going to be something neat and it's not going to leave ugly brackets. So you'll be able to take off the top and side luggages and the bike will look almost like 
nothing happened to it. That's one of the beauties of the Tracer 900 GT was you could take off the luggage and you couldn't tell there was any brackets that would hold luggage onto the bike. So that and the new suspension components should add to a better ride and experience for two up riding. Also, those suspension components should fix up a little bit of the rocking horse syndrome that's with these sport tours and adventure bikes. The Tracer 900 GT or Tracer 900 were never that bad for the rocking horse, but it should correct it a little bit and all these bikes could use a little bit of help in that department. Now this one kind of struck me funny, but Yamaha is claiming that they specifically designed these tires with Bridgestone that are supposed to improve the handling and the way the bike feels and everything. I'll have to see it to believe it because Japanese bikes are notorious for horrible tires that are just made to get you out of the dealership and then you're going to want something else. So let's see if they did it right this time. Only time will tell when we get to review the bike. The brake system is pretty much the same, although they are doing radial pistons, which should improve brake feel. That should be something that, you know, just gives you a little more communication with what's going from your bike to the road. Now, most of you that watch the channel know I'm not really big on rider modes and all that kind of stuff. I don't mind uh, the old Tracer 900 GT had three rider modes or whatever, because usually you find one that you like, and then after that, you just leave it there. And the rest of it ends up just being a light on the dash that you got to go into the dealership to fix because you have no clue how to fix it and it ends up costing you money. I'm not all that into the tech, but maybe some of you are. But out of that, I think the only thing that I really like are the easy suspension adjustments. So when you're riding two up or loaded or unloaded, you can adjust the suspension settings with a couple different electronic gadgets. That might be nice. Other than that, I don't really care about those things. But one disappointment in the electronics package is there's no cell phone integration. And I feel Yamaha dropped the ball on that, especially increasing the price two grand. With all those new electronics comes a whole new dash. And I'm not going to say much about it. A lot of people are talking about it. it looks like a certain robotic car that used to talk to its homeowner. And some people hate it, some people love it. I'm kind of torn. I'd like to see it in person before I make final judgment. One thing that does excite me about this bike is that Yamaha in the 900cc category with their MT-09s and their Tracers and whatever bikes they put out, they put on the ugliest signal lights on the face of the earth. The ugliest signal lights that have been used since I swear 1952. And now they finally have a pretty decent looking LED signal light system where you don't have to go out and buy a custom one. This excites me a lot, probably more than just about anything else on the bike. Now Yamaha is trying something new with the seating position. They're having three adjustable touch points on the handlebars, the foot pegs, and the seat. So you can kind of adjust those the way you want. Now this was very popular on the Vulcan 650s from Kawasaki. They were more of a cruiser, but you could adjust for your style of riding. I'm not sure how it's going to work, but a little bit of adjustment to suit the personalized rider will always create a lot more enjoyment on a long trip. Now, windscreens. You guys all know that I hate windscreens, that I've got the little Puig racing screen on mine. The one the 900 GT used was horrible. The worst windscreen I've ever had. It was the loudest thing I've ever experienced. They have worked a lot on it. It looks really different. It's quite big. For me, I take off my windscreens. I don't like windscreens. But for some of you that like the quiet cockpit, this might be just the answer for you. We'll have to wait and see because again, the manufacturers, they all talk about their beautiful quiet windscreens and most of the time they come out just absolutely terrible. It's like being in a cyclone. Now I'm curious and I'd like to hear what you guys think down below about what you think about the looks on this thing. I think it's different. It's starting to grow on me. When I first looked at it, I kind of got the impression that they were trying to copy the Multistrata. But as I start to look at it, it's kind of a natural evolution. They can't just not change anything. And it's not out there, out there. Um, there's some nice touches on the lighting. These bikes are never beautiful bikes anyway. They're designed to carry two people and luggage and stuff like that. So they're never going to be the sportiest bike on the road. I think they did okay, but let me know down below what you think. Once again, as far as I can see, there's two versions. That's the 9 GT and the 9 non-GT. 
However, I couldn't find that here on the Canadian websites. I could not find a non-GT model. So I'm wondering if it's not coming to Canada, but I definitely know that it's coming to Europe and the States for those of you watching from there. Uh, but I just don't know if Canada is going to get the, uh, the 9 without the GT. But there's a bunch of options that are coming on the GT. One of the coolest things they're doing this year is cruise control a standard on both models wherever you are. So that is a deal breaker. Once you guys try that cruise control, you'll be hooked. It is absolutely wonderful. Turn it off when you get into the twisties, but for the long trip to get there, wonderful. Absolutely beautiful. It'll save you a ton on tickets as well. So with the GT package, just like last time, you get the luggage on the back, which just about is worth the price of admission alone. And then you're also going to get uh, heated grips that are above the nine. And you're also going to get the dual up uh, electronic um, ride control so that you can put a passenger on. And you also get two other soft and sporty ride modes where the suspension stiffens or softens and that can be adjusted on the fly. So there's a lot of cool things that come with the GT. It's well worth it. Quick shifter, up and down. And of course... Lean sensitive lights, which is one of those electric things I'm not sure if I really like. Maybe it's great. I don't know. I try not to ride at night. We have a deer problem here in Canada and the U.S. where you drive during dusk and you get deer jumping in front of you. So I'm not worried about that kind of stuff, but maybe some of you guys are really liking that idea. So now that we're done with the features, let's get to the pricing. I checked on the Canadian website, and like I said before, I couldn't even find the non-GT model, but the GT model was at $16,995. My MSRP when I bought my model, which is two model years old now, it's a 2019, was somewhere around $14,600. So it's $23,000, $2,400 more bike. Is it worth it? What do you guys think? Before I get on to it here, what do you think? And I'll tell you my opinion right away. So when I bought the Tracer 900 GT, there was not another touring bike for the value and sporty at that that I could find. Nowhere. The bike had outshined everything. Now it's creeping back up with like Ninja 1000s. Uh, by MSRP, it's more than the BMW variant of this model. And uh, I don't know, a bunch of electronics, that engine and braking and all that stuff that they say are improved have to improve a lot for me to think that this bike is worth $2,400 more than what I paid for the bike because it's essentially the same bike with a little more horsepower and some gas savings. But what do you guys think? Tell me down below, because I'd really like to hear from you if you're still considering it. I guess if you've never bought, I definitely would not upgrade to the 9 GT right now until I've miled out my bike. But then I might be looking at a bunch of other manufacturers and I think this is what could hurt Yamaha, is people coming off these bikes, not necessarily going right back into a Tracer 900, they look at the Tracer 9 and it's now out of their budget. So now if it's out of their budget, they might be thinking something like a BMW or maybe a Triumph Tiger or something like that. There's a lot more competition up into the price range when you start raising the price of your bikes and that's something they better watch out about. The Tracer 900 GT, it was always a little bit on the rough side. It was always a little bit bucky when the corners got a little bit tight and uh, bumpy. Um, the shifter was a little bit notchy, all those kind of things. So they better rethink those things before they go up to the other competitors in the market that already have that level of refinement that was already lacking in the, in the uh, Tracer 900 GT. And the new package, it does do a lot to address those concerns, uh, at least on paper, especially in the electrical department, but that isn't really something that's worth it for me. Maybe it is for you. So for now, I would pass on this new bike. $17,000 just seems a little bit out of the range. I might be looking for a new one when I mile this out, and it might not be a Yamaha this time. But we'll see. Maybe the other manufacturers are going to change their pricing too. I don't know how the future is going to work, but as it stands right now, I definitely am going to be shopping around for the next bike to see what else I can get for that higher price range. Now, I could be proved wrong, the reviews aren't out on how this bike is going to handle and they did do some major uh, frame redesigns and everything so this bike might be way better handling than anything out there. Maybe that power, uh, the way the handling works and the lightness of the bike and everything, maybe that power makes a big difference putting the RPMs down lower. 
Maybe it turns into a real fun wheelie machine and the only thing you can get that's that much fun, then maybe I'll change my mind. But until I see those reviews or drive it for myself, I'm kind of split. I kind of don't recommend this if you've already got a 900 GT or FJ09. So tell me what you think. Is it worth it? Just let me know down below. That's all I have to say about the Tracer 9 GT for now. You guys, I'll have to catch you on the flip side in the next video. So remember to share, like, comment, and subscribe. This is Sixes Overdrive, and I'm out of here. Bye-bye.